we are taking a trip to River Bend Nature Center. So if you want to come check it out with us, hang around. I can't tell them apart. Pretty much everybody here has a name for like the roaches and the scorpions. Here we go. There we go. That's cool. Another one. Have you ever seen them do the fluorescent thing with the uh, UV bulb? It's a pretty neat thing. Like if you ever need to find scorpions, the best way to do it is with a UV light or a black light. It'll uh, fluoresce a bright kind of glow in the dark kind of color. Hmm. Like I can see, I can shine the nuts on that cricket over there. Nothing happens, but I'll move it over a scorpion. Oh, there it is. What gives them their glow is a protein called beta carboline. And they're one of the only terrestrial arthropods to do this, or at least for chemical reasons. Hmm. So I'm not sure where his buddy is. I'm gonna start lifting up some stuff. Oh, yeah, there he is. See him hiding under there. Well, it'd be easy to find him at night or with the light. Like that. Yeah, I mean, if you're camping, this is probably the best way to find him in case you're <laughs> paranoid about him getting in your tents and stuff. Yeah. The darker it is, the better that glow shows up. So at night, they tend to really stick out. Desert. What kind of snake is this one? This is a desert king snake. They're desert native to kind of southwest Texas. Mm. And the name's a bit of a misnomer. They're not actually found in deserts, just kind of around them. Mm. They've been introduced to north Texas because of farmers and ranchers. They, uh, I know he doesn't look big enough to do it, but they can eat rattlesnakes and copperheads. And the uh, neat thing about the typical king snake, they're the Catula species, is they can eat other snakes that are like 30 to 40 percent larger than he is hmm. it's the equivalent of a Big six foot tall top. person eating a eight foot tall person no uh -huh. they usually just accordion pack the other snake in their stomach in order to fit it all in there he was one of our first snakes he's probably about 12 years old now uh -huh. Yeah, he's looking pretty good all over right now. Although I think he might be getting ready to molt in about a month or so. You can see he's getting kind of a gray sheen on there and that usually takes about two to three weeks before really showing up. I think last time he molted though was last month. So he's uh, he's still pretty fresh. I think about once a month. Uh, it depends on how old they are. At his age, he's shedding about every three or four months. 
maybe like two or three times oh, a year. Okay. Maybe four. In the winter, he usually doesn't do anything or molt. He just kind of sits around in the winter. He doesn't like cold. Not many snakes do. Yeah. Texas fence lizard sitting over here. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, kind of so. a special guest star in that cage. He's, um, I don't know if you can notice, but he is missing one of his back legs. He was, uh, his leg was bit off by a squirrel, of all things. Huh. So he was a rescue. I brought him in. And I didn't have a cage that I could really put him in, so I just kind of put him in there with the turtles, because now the turtles don't mess with him, and he won't mess with those. I put him in with any of the snakes that probably try to eat him. That turtle right there is teeing. He's got some metabolic bone disease, so his shell looks a little funny. We was talking about that the other day. How long does their, does their shells break down? Like uh, just when, like they, when they die. And yeah, but it can take a long time for the shell to break down. It's a particular type of it's dermal bone. It's really mm -hmm. tough. Well, that's what she was saying that she didn't know. No, I, mean, I knew that they take forever. Yeah. If it's just a regular like bone shell sitting around and nothing's messing with it, then it can last as long as any skeleton would. Mm -hmm. But if it's like all broken up and things are like kind of chipping away at it, then mm -hmm. yeah, it'll turn to dust eventually. Like bugs or other scavengers or things that want to go in there and kind of start getting the good bits that are in, uh, and it will start doing their uh, their job. Just hatched out an hour ago. Yeah, he's pretty new. See that stuff that just came out of him right there? Yeah. That's a leftover stuff they had as a caterpillar called meconium. They usually drop it before they start flying. That's why there's these weird kind of stains that are on the uh, thing. There's one that hatched out not too long ago. His wings are still wet. You see him? Right there. His wings are all wet. Oh, yeah. yeah. It takes about 15 or 30 minutes for the wings to dry. I mean, uh, sometimes it takes longer. It just depends on how hot it is. If it's all cloudy and cold, it'll take a little longer, but... So he's just dropping his meconium right there. Try to get that out of it. It's kind of gross, but that's just nature. That's a really good looking buckeye, too. What are they called? This is a buckeye. A buckeye? The buckeye. common buckeye. Where are they native to? 
Oh, you'll find them all over North America. Oh. They're a bit more common here in the southern part of the United States, though. You can find them up north, but they tend to do a migration down here, like in the, uh, the winter months. You can probably find some Buckeyes outside right now, actually. Although the one I've been seeing the most out there is these little, uh, what do you call them? Sorry. Um, oh. emperor butterflies. Like little hackberry emperors. They're roughly the same size, except they're a little bit duller in color and uh, have smaller eye spots and just kind of lighter colored wings in general. Sun faded, I guess is the term I'm going for. They're a bit more sun faded looking than the Buckeyes. Mm. The zebra over here, I know he's good. He's been hanging in there for a while. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. That's the zebra heliconian. It's what kind? The zebra heliconian. Zebra heliconian. You can just call it a zebra long wing. <laughs> yeah, that's easier. That's cool. These little red shoulders. You know, the orange julias are a close relative, and they also have the red shoulders on them. It's just harder to see because orange julias and like orange and red just kind of blended together. Mm -hmm. He's going to hang out up here with these buckeyes until he's ready to fly. Oh, we're down there. Just anywhere that's not. wings dried a little funny. We'll still be able to fly, it's just they're gonna have some trouble. This is the white peacock. They're native to kind of southeast Texas, like they're more of a Gulf Coast thing. Uh, this is the only butter uh, butterfly we have in here that I've never seen out there. I've seen at least one of all of these guys out in the wild. Oh yeah, Buckeyes. Usually the thing I tell visitors about the Buckeyes is the most prominent around Mother's Day, and then I realized Mother's Day was just yesterday. Uh-huh. Well, he's a good looking one, too. Look yeah, at the orange on him. Got nice purple, pink eye spots. Uh -huh. Beautiful. Sometimes you'll find Buckeyes that have a green, like, copper sheens to their wings. They're pretty variable in their color. Their eye spots are the ones that change the most. The uh, green ones are kind of rare though. I usually just little brown ones. Mm -hmm. This one's a little rough looking, but other than that, it'll be able to fly. It's kind of small too. Where we're going? Up there first, I guess. Could I move? Oh. 
up this way. Run down. Forest trails and ceremony site. United Children's Garden. That's where we'll go first. See the moon? Mm-hmm. I already took a picture of it. See why it comes out like that. Stroller cam is going to be bouncy. See any frogs? Trying to find mama frog, are you? See the old cabin? There's a lot of rain in here. It used to be dry, but it had to me. This is where we can go that way, but I don't want to get this waterfall. Now, the question is, where did they go? Really, if y'all get a chance to come visit River Bend Nature Center, it's well worth the six bucks. Six bucks for adults. You know, come check it out. Especially if it's too hot to do anything else. Oh, there they are. Let's see if we can catch them. So you could have came from up there down those steps. Looks like I caught them. It's pretty, uh, pretty thick. There they are. We had discussed getting married right there. But how much was that to get married right here? It was expensive though. It's pretty though. It's so pretty down here. It feels good right here. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. Uh -huh. Man, isn't it? Something. I'm just sitting there and waiting on you. Are you comfortable? <coughs> What's your grandpa? Go, go. In the children's butterfly home. Last year there wasn't no butterflies in there. Mm -mm. I think the screen door was broke last year or something. They all escaped.
that little hut. Here's some good reflection. What? This is it? Mosquitoes are out down here. Make sure ain't none on her. I've been kind of watching, but that was the end of the line. You see that? Yeah. I don't remember that being there. Mm -mm. Right, that is going to wrap it up for the River Bend Nature Center in Wichita Falls. If you'll get a chance, come check it out. Anything to add? No. It's hot and you want a drink? Yes. Sonics. She, she wants Sonic. And I want the mosquitoes to go away. Exactly. I'm not looking forward to that. Anyway, y'all keep on keeping on, and we'll see y'all down the road. Bye. Bye.